Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Do you hear me well? Yes, I do. Good. So we have still a couple of minutes, uh, four minutes to be uh, exact, until we can officially start with our first webinar this year. Um, so let's wait. Uh, but mean, uh, meanwhile, I see that some of us are already here, so feel free to add any comments or questions to the chat. Um, let us know how are you doing, how's life, are you really busy or not? <laughs> and um, yeah, we can continue in three minutes. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, can you hear me okay? I can hear you well, yeah. Amazing. So uh, we will start in one uh, minute. Uh, welcome to everyone who has already signed in. Um, happy to see you here. Let's wait until everyone is here and then we can um, yeah, start with our first webinar this year. All right, uh, let's start. 
And welcome to uh, everyone. Uh, welcome to our first uh, webinar this year. Um, today we will talk about employer branding. And um, instead of uh, focusing on uh, fancy campaigns and huge budgets that are often, unfortunately, associated with employer branding, we are rather today focusing on how to define uh, culture, how to create employee value proposition, how to engage your employees and to build the brand with their help, and also how to use Recruit Lab to showcase your employer brand and uh, culture when you're hiring. Um, my name is Marie Evert. I'm uh, one of the uh, co-founders of uh, Recruit Lab. And Recruit Lab is a recruitment software with uh, built-in tools for employer branding, recruitment marketing, video interviewing, and uh, applicant tracking. So as a recruiter, you can do basically everything in uh, one place. Um, for example, you can create attractive uh, career pages so you don't have to wait until your marketing or IT team has time for it, or you don't have to spend uh, like extra money uh, on working with different agencies. So the tool is really easy. You can just uh, drag and drop and uh, select the se uh, sections you would like to use, upload your own info, and uh, you're ready to go. Or uh, with Recruit Lab, you can create um, attractive recruitment landing pages. We all know that it is still a candidate driven market. So you need to sell your company as an employer, as an attractive employer to, uh, to attract the best talent. And again, with a really easy tool, you can uh, create those landing pages and uh, reach more candidates um, in different uh, channels. And in, in addition to that, uh, you can have all the information related to your candidates, recruitment projects, uh, recruitment statistics, convenient in one place. So I will not go into more details today because I'm already eager to move on with the discussions uh, with, with our two uh, speakers today. But I noticed that many of you are uh, looking uh, for a new ATS or recruitment software at the moment. So. Uh, feel free to uh, uh, book a demo with us uh, to get the best um, overview of Recruit Lab. Uh, I just uh, shared the link to, to the chat. Um, and as Recruit Lab is built by recruiters, uh, for recruiters, so we're always eager to help you out, to help you get started, uh, yeah, to share our insights and uh, knowledge and uh, always learn from you as well. But uh, moving on, um, today I have uh, two lovely uh, guest speakers uh, with me, uh, Charlotte from uh, LoopMe and uh, Karina from uh, Destlia. And um, yeah, uh, use this time today to ask questions from uh, Charlotte and uh, Karina. Just add your questions to the uh, questions uh, tab. You will uh, find it on the right. Um, and you can also upvote uh, questions that are added by others so that to make sure that we will pick the most popular ones. Uh, I already saw that there's a question whether we are recording the webinar. Yes, we are. And we will uh, share the recording with all the participants after, after the webinar. So you will um, yeah, have the access. But uh, let's start with you, uh, Charlotte. First, thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, and maybe you can uh, give, uh, give us a bit more information about LoopMe and also your role uh, at the company. Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. Um, yes, so my name is Charlotte Forsyth. I'm LoopMe's first uh, VP of people. Um, so I have ultimate accountability for the entire employee lifecycle, everything from also our employer branding, um, and the recruitment piece right through to uh, onboarding, life cycle events, offboarding, etc. And ultimately um, helping Luke Me to scale its culture and employee experience as we scale the business um, as well. So in terms of my background, I spent the last 10 
12 maybe uh, years um, sort of working in the consumer market research media sort of end of tech rather than pure tech like SaaS or software development. Um, I sort of started in financial services but um, after seven years and, and sort of doing HR through uh, the last recession I, I, um, I sort of changed lanes slightly into um, sort of tech. Ultimately I'm really interested in why consumers engage with the content that they do, why they engage with the brands that they do, um, especially uh, sort of in industries that are really kind of more digital, like sort of newspapers, radio, uh, market research, etc. So I've kind of started off in the, the bigger companies like the, the WPPs and uh, sort of news and Facebooks of this world and then have progressively moved into much smaller startups. And um, so hopefully I've got like a good blend of big established dare I say grown up companies <laughs> uh, but then I've also like so this is my third scale up that I've worked in now um, in terms of helping sort of an organization kind of grow and, and ultimately exit. But as you have worked uh, in really different companies like uh, what are the main like uh, myths or misbeliefs you have heard regarding employer branding and also maybe building the culture? Yeah, um, so I think, first of all, the, the biggest one is probably that it all sits with HR. Um, you know, kind of, I believe very much that anything to do with culture, brand, employee experience, it's a three-legged stool, right? It's the individual, it's the leadership, and it's HR. Um, and I'm sure we'll kind of um, sort of come on to this shortly, uh, but certainly my time at, um, at sort of World Remit when I first joined there, um, I was being told, recruitment's broken, recruitment's broken, everybody's leaving because recruitment's broken. I was like, let's be really clear, we have got 36% attrition. You know, so a third of our staff over, a third of our staff are walking out the door every year. Half of those people have got less than one year's service. That's not a recruitment issue. Can I make recruitment go faster? Yes. Can I um, ensure that it's more data-driven, it's more scalable, uh, we're more competency sort of focused? Absolutely, but that's a leadership issue. If we're losing that many people within their first year of joining, that's not because recruitment isn't going fast enough. Um, so that was something I had sort of pushed back on sort of quite hard in terms of we've all got joint accountability for creating a culture and a brand that we're really um, sort of proud of. Um, and I think also then related to that, it's about being authentic. It's about mm -hmm. knowing who you are and knowing who you're not. You might not be for everybody, but that's okay. Um, and again, that was certainly a, a lesson learned when they were building the brand at World Remit a few years ago. Okay, I see uh, one uh, question already here in the chat. Uh, uh, was uh, what is Loop Me? Maybe you can shortly. Sorry, talk. yes, yeah. What um, is it doing uh, for the company? Yeah, sure. So uh, this is going to test my knowledge of whether I can actually explain what we do because <laughs> I've been here sort of eight months. So ultimately, we. Um, we are an AI driven software company. We work with brands and uh, sort of advertising agencies, so again, the WPPs of, of the world, ultimately to help. Um, we sort of understand through the use of surveys, through the use of um, sort of cookies and tracking kind of uh, what people are sort of doing online. So we can kind of track that, say, for Mac makeup, for example. You know, they might be better, um, you know, sort of if they want to target a woman in their 40s um, with a certain number of disposable income who likes that makeup, I'm more likely to be found on the BBC website than maybe the Daily Mail website. So we help brands position where they're going to get the most conversion um, and attention. Um, but because we're AI driven, we're doing that in real time. So we had an example a couple of months ago where... Uh, for a certain trainer or sneaker company, um, we were um, we were able to tell through our data that actually the people that they were targeting the trainers at or the sneakers at, it wasn't actually the sort of twenty-something-year-old hipsters. Actually, it was like the dads in their forties who wanted to look cool. So we can kind of switch where the advert is placed in real time and ultimately help brands get that conversion and um, sort of a lot. Um, sort of quicker um, and hopefully that's the best way I can kind of uh, sort of describe in terms of what we do. Okay. It's very very cool because it's AI driven we are literally shaping you know the future of advertising as, as we go. Yeah sounds uh, sounds really interesting but uh, coming back to employer branding uh, you have probably seen 
as you have worked in different companies, you have seen a lot of mistakes uh, related to employer branding. Maybe you can name a couple of those that yeah, are, uh, they avoid when they are uh, like um, at the beginning of the journey of starting with the employer branding. Yeah, sure. So I think it goes back to the point about being authentic and kind of knowing who you are. So um, again, when I joined World Remit, and for people who don't know who they are, they are a mission-driven fintech, a mission-driven um, sort of payments or remittance sort of advice, um, sorry, uh, not advice, uh, platform, uh, app-enabled, again, so um, a bit like a uh, Western Union or a MoneyGram or sort of money transfer. Um, if, say, I was living abroad, maybe in America, and I wanted to send money back home to my friends and family, sort of, you know, in, in Birmingham, sort of in England, that's just that, essentially the map that helps me transfer kind of that money. And it was an absolutely fascinating business to be part of um, because um, probably the biggest, uh, the two biggest parts of our sort of um, organisation and customer base were either sort of Africa or Southeast Asia. And it's really fascinating to kind of see how, again, sort of people in America, in the UK, in Ireland, um, sort of their habits and behaviour when it's sending money um, sort of back home. So very much kind of diaspora driven, um, very um, uh, diverse in terms of um, certain holidays or religious festivals and sort of the times of year that were really important to people. So, for example, for the Filipino diaspora, a really big time of the year was May time when you know, nieces, nephews, grandchildren whoever back home were graduating high school or university and they would send money back to their sort of communities. Um, so fascinating business to be in because it was uh, geographically very diverse. Uh, again, really fascinating from a consumer behaviour kind of perspective um, and um, very mission driven in terms of, you know, our purpose was to serve for our customers, to solve for our customers um, and to enable um, for want of a better phrase, economic migrants uh, to achieve their dreams and really drive that financial inclusion sort of for, for everybody. So that's really special to kind of work for a global fintech, which has got a really strong sense of mission. We've got an incredible um, founder um, who will probably have a film made about him one day. Um, you know, he was um, Somalian, uh, sort of uh, immigrant to London. Um, realised how difficult and costly it was to send money back home to his uh, community in Somaliland, went to work for the UN, then came back, set up World Remit. So all of that is amazing, and I wouldn't want to lose that. However, because we weren't clear about um, our employee value proposition, we had, first of all, a lot of people who joined us thinking that we were going to be a charity, um, because you would um, and we were never really clear with people that whilst we're very mission driven we are unapologetic about solving for the customer at pace and um, so I think people joined expecting a certain pace and actually kind of having a very um, very pacey CEO with very high standards meant that I think people joined expecting one thing and actually you know, what they sort of experienced in terms of expectations up here. So that was the first piece. We weren't really clear in terms of well, who are we and what do we offer? The second piece was that we weren't really clear about who was going to succeed or thrive uh, sort of at World Remit. So I think there was a little bit of intellectual snobbery, shall we say, about kind of, you know, we only have people from sort of HSBC or Deloitte or big four firms and all the rest of it. And again, that is fine. And I can say this as somebody who's worked at HSBC, you were often one of 15 people directing the traffic. You know, in a scale up, it's like you are often the only person. And actually, we kind of expected you to have done it yesterday. Um, so, and I think people really, who came from those big organizations, expected to be a lot more structure, a lot more infrastructure, a lot more process in place, um, kind of really struggled sort of with that. So in terms of coming up with our employee value proposition, which we're having sort of three very clear pillars in terms of what do you give, but what do you get? And our pillars were impact, purpose, and exposure. So we will absolutely give you the chance to have impact. You know, we were 
I think 800 people and I joined in, in sort of 18 months, which is actually all through COVID, we got to 1,600, so we essentially doubled our headcount. Um, but, you know, still, you were able to come in, have real sort of impact, work for an organisation with purpose, um, and have that real exposure to the leadership team, the CEO and the board, if you wanted it. Um, but then in return, we expected you to kind of, you know, want and deliver on that exposure. We expected you to have impact. And again, be really aligned with our purpose, which is solving for our customers and solving for our customers at pace. Um, so we had to be really, really clear about those three pillars I mean, in terms of this is who we are, this is who we're not. We're not for everybody and that's okay. But actually, if you want those three things, we can give you a fantastic sort of career. And, you know, I'm really proud of everything we did achieve in my time sort of at, at World Remix. I think it's a fantastic organisation to be part of. But as I said, it's recognising it's not for everybody, which is why we had, I think, 36% attrition when I joined. But you have been responsible for creating those uh, or deciding about those pillars and creating yeah. employee value proposition in, in several companies. Uh, what are the steps like or the method you are using? Uh, how, to, how to get started? Yeah, 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 sure. So I think, first of all, you've got to be really clear, like I said, in terms of um, what are people saying? Kind of about your brand um, and that's internal as well as external people so um, not just kind of doing focus groups or surveys amongst kind of the different um, groups of employees you might have within your organization but also what are candidates that are applying to you sort of saying what are their sort of impressions you know what are their impressions of your competitors for example um, and this is something we've been doing at Loop Me at the moment I'm sort of not in a position because we're just in the process of kind of working through it but I think where we will end up with our uh, sort of employer brand and again not being finalized yet but I think there will be something there about sort of innovation being human or authentic and maybe something about growth as well sort of as a pillar um, because actually having you know sort of spoken to people internally externally you know our board our leadership um, sort of different ad agencies etc we've started to build up the different personas or archetypes so i don't know if you've got kind of that graphic to hand which i am um, i sent if you yeah. so a quick look at this um so kind of in sort of surveying our people um and in surveying like i said sort of external parties as well just trying to really drill down into what do people think about when i think about some of these brands and i apologize that some of these are um, perhaps a little bit kind of uk sort of centric like the bbc but hopefully most people are sort of aware of who they are and stuff um, and it's really starting to break down kind of what do people think about these different brands what are the different personalities or archetypes um sort of of those brands and where we've actually landed um at Leap me is um sort of the uh, everyman so ikea so we are every what we are you know um we offer every man you know, uh, everybody kind of belongs, kind of, you know, so we go into an Ikea, it's very familiar. I think um, they're very authentic about who they are. I love their advertising. I think they've got a really genuine tone of voice that really connects to others. But then the other side is that we're also the creator. So if you look at the Apple logo, for example, so we're innovative. Um, and just in on one hand, there's that connection we provide sort of for our people and for our customers uh we also innovate um as well and perhaps some of the structure that underlines that from an innovation perspective um so that's i think where we're gonna land and i think again that's a really special place to be for a tech company that we've got um sort of the, the innovation side and, and then really when you and i were talking earlier in the week sort of joked that ai companies you know you see ai like on a presentation it's always blue it's always male and it's always blue um so um i think we're in a really special place that we've kind of got that blue innovative ai bit but then we've also got the warmth uh, and the authenticity that everybody belongs and we're here for, for every man if that makes sense mm -hmm. but uh, there are probably uh, participants today who are at the beginning of the journey uh like what would be the, ne the first step uh, should they, um, uh, I don't know, have a meeting with the uh, management uh, or serve, have a, like a, do a survey among employees or how to get the first information? Yeah, so I think kind of there's probably a step before that in terms of realising why are we doing this mm -hmm. sort of right. Um, and obviously I've used kind of the world remit example in that um, 
you know, we uh, have like 36% of attrition and um, that created to $9 million a year that we were spending on people that were joining but leaving um, right. as well. So we weren't getting that return on investment um, sort of back. Um, FinTech is a very oversaturated market, both for customers and employees. Um, so it was how can we um, sort of create a really compelling employer brand that not only attracts people, but then is also really authentic and lives up to that promise or that deal internally as well, so that we don't then get that um, sort of attrition. And um, so I think you need to be really clear what's the data telling you, kind of you know what's the what's the purpose of doing something like this? What are the benefits both internally and externally? Um, so I think kind of it's, it's been really clear on that and also having that as kind of your guiding principle, like everything you do should be linking back to, well, how does this sort of help us solve whatever the problem is that we're trying to fix in terms of whether you're sort of a really saturated sort of market, it's a really hot market for talent, people don't necessarily know your brand. We've had kind of this, um, sort of challenge in Poland, for example, we opened an office there just as I joined in May, and it's really hard to recruit software developers in Poland. It's even harder if nobody knows who you are. We haven't got a leadership team in place, or we couldn't even tell you if we were paying the right salary or the right benefits. So, you know, kind of, you've, you need to have all of that, the bit that kind of sits behind it in terms of the proposition lined up and right, but you've still got to have that shop window sort of piece and I wish I'd known actually Marie that um, Recruit Hub could actually sort of help us with like, our own sort of pages and website and stuff because again mm -hmm. we've been quite dependent on other parties um, to sort of get it internally to get it off the ground for us so notes are for the future um, so you've got to kind of have that shop window and that really clear voice and again we might not be for everybody but that's okay but if we are for you this is what we can offer um, sort of you so I think that's almost the first step I'd say to people understand what is the problem that you're trying mm -hmm. to solve why are you doing this um, and what's the data sort of telling you then it's a case of starting to do kind of the focus groups and sort of really understanding from people and maybe you know you use a wheel like that to say well when you think of our company do you see us as you know the Ikea versus the Apple versus the Hugo Boss versus the, the BBC for example I mean, I think once you've started to really drill down into that, and then again understand, well, what do people say about your competitors? And actually, are they in the space that you want to be in? You know, if you do want to be in that space, can you actually change the culture and line everything up internally to give that authentic experience? Um, and then, like I said, sort of once you've got a really clear idea in terms of what's the story, what's the deal, what are the three pillars then that you can absolutely sort of say to everybody, this is what you give. But this is what you get. So whether it's impact, purpose, exposure, whether it's innovation, authenticity, growth, for example, all those three pillars that you, um, uh, you know, really want to be able to give to people, be really authentic on. Yeah. Okay. Really good. But uh, thank you, Charlotte. Uh, pleasure. Uh, move on. Let's move on with uh, Karina. Uh, hello. I will uh, add your uh, slides in a second, but you can start uh, introducing Tesla, maybe, and uh, also uh, tell us a bit more about your role at Tesla as well. Sure. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Charlotte, for the first part. It was interesting to listen. And also, we have um, done something uh, similar at Tesla as well regarding the, the EVP, putting that together. Uh, but um, I'm Karina. I'm Tesla's employer brand manager. And um, my goal, I would say, at Tesla is to empower our people to share their experience working at Teslio um, on different um, channels publicly. So on our website, uh, blog articles, uh, career page, and social media as well. And uh, Teslio is a female founded uh, company, startup company, and uh, we test uh, phone apps, basically, software testing company. Uh, we have over 200 people all across the world working full time. And we also have a network of freelancers. So there are over 10,000 people there. And uh, we're present in over 100 countries. 
And we have, right now, we have an insanely good glass door rating, which is 4.9. I can't believe it, but this is, this is really cool. Uh, you can check it out yourself as well. This is not a lie. And uh, almost half of our people are women at Tessio. So this is, this is really cool too. And uh, yeah, those are some of the companies we're working together with. Um, you can see there on the right. Got it. I have a question right away. Like, have you done anything special to get this 9.9, uh, 4.9 rating at Glassdoor? Or, uh, I think it's a, it's probably a combination of of a lot of different things and kind of also maybe internally um, encouraging people to share their their uh, positive experiences as well because when once you have a negative experience there's a higher chance that you're going to go and, and write about it and talk about it um, but we try to um, encourage people who are very happy to you know vocalize that as well so that's kind of what we've done internally and when it comes to Glassdoor we try to be attentive of the reviews as well so whenever there's a new uh, review up um, we you know, pay attention to it. And if there are some concerns uh, addressed, then we try to uh, reply to them as well. And usually uh, the reply comes from an executive uh, level. So we try yeah. to um, involve them as much as possible and actually listen to what people have to say and um, yeah, try to improve things. That's really good. Thanks. <laughs> sure. I think you can go to the next slide. Yeah. So uh, we're a global company and uh, we call our team the Test Lion Pride. So companies Teslio, if you work at Teslio uh, or you're a part of the freelance network, you're called a Test Lion. So the story goes, uh, Christel Grustek is one of our uh, founders. Uh, she got an idea to create Teslio and went to a hackathon in London in 2012 uh, with her um, co-founder and now husband uh, Marco. And uh, they won the hackathon and then went to the U.S. Uh, to participate in an accelerator program. And there they met an investor who is our CEO right now called Steve. And uh, when Steve met the founders and saw Crystal, um, he said that, have you noticed that if you put an N at the end of Teslio, you get a test lion? And that matches kind of uh, Crystal's hair. And, and, and the whole whole persona. So this is the where the where the whole um, Tesla and Pride concept comes from. And also here you can see on the visual how we developed our logo. So that also derives from a lion. So basically, this is the this is the story of our our um, culture. If you can, yeah, like the. Um, Slide. So yeah, the previous one is that we uh, created a little um, animation that shows how we have uh, people all around the world. Uh, I can share the link to it later. It's a pretty cool animation. Anyway, uh, however, uh, we are very um, value and purpose driven company and very human centric in general. So in our communication internal and both um, external as well, uh, we tend to refer a lot to our purpose and vision. Um, as you can see, the we power network testing to enable human possibilities. So there's always this human element to it. Uh, you can uh, go to the next slide. And we also have six values and um, that we also hold true most of our people know them by heart and we try to use them whenever we communicate, send messages on Slack. We even have Slack reactions with those values. And whenever there's like an internal um, initiative, for example, then we try to include at least one of the values or the purpose within uh, in the in the title, for example, or or more. So we try to integrate that, that as much as possible. And our people are actually listening and and they you know remember those and and they use them in their own um messages as well this is not just like our like people and culture agenda that we're using so it's it's really cool to see how uh people this this really speaks to them as well uh you can change the slide. Yes. Um, I cannot share, unfortunately, all of our uh, EVP pillars here, but this is kind of the overview. We did a, um, um, a strategic project when I joined uh, a year year and a half ago as well uh, to find out what are the what are our uh, main messages, employer brand messages that we try to communicate every day. And uh, when Charlotte briefly showed the, I believe it's like the Jung's 
wheel brand brand wheel right uh, we used a different one uh, by Richard Mosley uh, but our um, positioning is empowerment so we try to empower our people our clients our uh, the the end users of the of the apps that we test and and the communities that we support and uh, once you you work at Tessio the team's really important. So we have a very connected team, even though people work from all around the world, from their own homes mostly. We do have a have a basis or like talent center and in Tallinn, Estonia, but um, essentially everyone's main place of work is, is their home. Uh, but despite that, we're connected and we have a lot of uh, internal uh, initiatives and, and uh, possibilities and ways to connect with each other. Um, just doesn't matter which level you can you can have a 20 minute meeting with the CEO you can book it if you want to it's just really it's really easy to reach people and uh, we have a growth mindset so we're a growing company uh, we encourage growth personal professional and also exper just experimenting with new ideas because then that's how you can learn and then also we have a huge emphasis on on the work we do and, and that it has a bigger purpose um, we work with really great clients. And uh, we also have uh, an, an initiative, for example, called um, Ignite, where we each year we take people from uh, who have ex have had maybe harder, um, diff difficult life experiences, and they're looking for. Um, for a new career um, opportunity, so we train them to become software testers, um, and that's a, that's a way for us to to give back to the community. So the work we do is thanks to to the work we do, we're able to um, to have this program, for example. So you know, giving back to uh, the community as well. Karina, there's a question in the chat: uh, uh, Did you use external help? Uh, when coming up with your purpose, values, and EVP? Um, no. Um, when, when it comes to purpose and values, I don't actually know. I know that um, I don't think we did. Um, I wasn't here when those were formulated. Um, but when it comes to the EVP, uh, since I used to work at an, uh, at an employer running and recruitment agency, but on them, uh, then I had the experience of, of doing, this, doing similar uh, projects in other countries companies um so i kind of used my knowledge and used my colleagues knowledge and kind of put put the the framework all together so we we did it on our own step by step and the executive leadership team was pretty involved as well so that was great to see the um to yeah to see the interest and in, and um kind of yeah in, ambition and effort from their side as well so yeah did it more or less yeah just by ourselves Good. Yeah, so this is the whole part about the kind of the concept and the messages and anything. Any other questions or, or we can move on to? Not right now, we can move on. <laughs> sure. So uh, this is a bit more practical part. Basically, we, st we became much more um, active on our employer branding communication just last year. And here are some um, some numbers as well. So uh, our employee engagement rate, which in includes our freelance people as well, was uh, 33%. So that means that we managed to include uh, 74 people in our employer brand communication. So that means that they either shared their picture, we wrote a, an article about them, they uh, created a video, um, all, all of those, all of those uh, options. And uh, thanks to all this this activity and all this this content, we got to um, increase uh, the the numbers of like social media numbers as well. So we had um, plus thirty one percent growth in engagement across um, different social media channels. So we are active on LinkedIn, um, Instagram, also Facebook, and at the end of last year, we created a TikTok as well. So this one, I don't have the stats here because we didn't have a chance to measure them yet, but um, we're there uh, present as well. So follow us. Anyway, and uh, <laughs> got a lot of new uh, followers and the growth was uh, growth in reach was uh, was really good too compared to the previous year. Um, we didn't use uh, much uh, uh, like boosting like ads. So we didn't really spend a lot of uh, money on uh, promoting our uh, posts just a little bit at the end of the year. Um, but as you can see, we tried to just um, 
yeah, include as many people as possible. And since we're uh, global, we're, we have a huge focus on diversity and making sure that we have the representation of you know, people from all those places that we're hiring and all the places where we have uh, clients as well, uh, just to have all this transparency and kind of, yeah, empower our people to talk, uh, share their story and talk about their experience in, in various different ways, whether they want to write an article or participate in a video or just share their comment about, we had the, the Hispanic um, Heritage Month um, reached out to people with um, with uh, Hispanic heritage and asked them for a for a quote, uh, a comment. So you can sh uh, switch the slide. How we did that uh, in cooperation with our lovely recruitment assistant Laura Maria. I believe she's here today as well. Hi, love you. Thank you for for being uh, here. Anyway, how we did this was that first we created um, a Google Sheet, basically very simple, uh, where we put um the instruction or the idea of introduction of the whole initiative i feel like it's easier to um to invite people to join and get people to join when you explain what's the what's the purpose of it and what they get out of that and why is it so cool <laughs> because we believe it's great and um so we had a little uh paragraph there that explained all that uh, why, why you should uh join and then um, just some simple steps, um, say t more like giving an insight of how easy it is to participate, um, that you don't really need to worry about much. All, all, all you need to have is your phone and, and a clear background, which for example, I don't have. So, you know, some things um, to consider. And then we had a brainstorm, just the two of us, with different types of uh, content that we could create. So we were like, oh, the holidays are coming up. Maybe we can ask uh, people from all around the world to uh, wish everyone happy holidays in their native language. Or we have a great, a great content club, uh, which is a separate Slack channel where people um, like choose a book every month that, to read together and th then discuss maybe let's have a book recommendation video or since we all work from our homes um, let's ask people to give their home office tours as a, as a short video so we had all these ideas listed there and then we created slots where people could just drop in their name and all they had to do was to exactly go there write down their name and then we would do the rest of the com communication now, so this was the basis, and in order to get the word out, uh, we tried to use a lot of um, video material because you need to lead by example. So if you want to encourage people to take videos of themselves, you have to feel super comfortable with, with video uh, yourself. So um, we did a little video where we were explaining the same initiative, also had it in writing, and there um, I especially took the caption of, from the video where we're uh, shaking hands in this way. And if you uh, noticed previously, this is the icon of of one of our values, team is everything. So this was kind of our tagline at the end as well, you know, team is everything, so come and join us. Um, so we did this call, out, uh, call to action, and also uh, I put at the, um, in the in the corner there uh, the video example of uh, how to do the book recommendation video so for some of the content where we had a very specific idea of how the clips should uh, transition uh, we created an example video and linked that as well so that people would know exactly what they need to do so below you can see the the result there um, so just all about communication and trying to every once in a while just sending another message out being like hi we're still waiting for your um you know sign up there and also sharing the the content that we already created so that people could see that it is simple it is really cool i want to do it too because it, it's it's really we're very um very lucky to have this culture that's super proactive people want to help people want to be a part of things and uh, you can really feel the yeah the excitement and uh, just the uh, the happiness of like wanting to be a part of that. So it wasn't very difficult to find uh, people who would do it or the ones who didn't sign up themselves, we would reach out and very, very rarely get a no. Uh, people would be usually very, very excited and also thankful that we asked them. Do I uh, understand correctly that basically the budget for uh, creating this kind of content was zero because you managed to do everything with your own employees, with your own like phones and. Uh... Yep, 
Exactly, like zero. Uh, when it comes to putting together the videos as well, uh, I'm I'm super enthusiastic about um, video editing. So I did all of those myself. Uh, we do have a visual designer who created kind of the visuals, or he would create some yeah some examples, and I would just copy those. So when it comes to the design and stuff, I, I had some support, but technically we put it all together uh, ourselves. Yeah, zero. Yeah. Because you know, often uh, there's a misbelief that uh, employer branding is uh, expensive or you have to have like a huge budget to create uh, uh, content and to share that. But actually, if you engage your own employees and if you make it fun and uh, yeah, interesting, then you can do it with basically zero uh, budget or, or with a very low budget. So that's a good yeah. really initiative from your side right because people are kind of like used to uh having those budgets and suddenly when you don't then you're like oh no we can't do it but you can always do it and and you just have to be super open open-minded and being able to yeah just to learn and being open to you know making mistakes and stuff as well and it might take a bit longer because of the learning curve but once you know all those things it's much easier at the end and, and you yourself um yeah grow and learn a lot so it's been a great experience and still is. Um, yeah, from so this is that's it from this side. I guess you can <laughs> we can move on to uh, personal branding and doing branding on LinkedIn. So another uh, really cool initiative that we started uh, that I'd like to share with you today is called the LinkedIn SSI score game. Um, you, just change the next slide, please. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we are hiring um, on LinkedIn a lot. So we use LinkedIn a lot for, for hiring. And it's important for us to be visible there uh, that our hiring managers are more uh, more active and have nice profiles and, and also just our employees. So we created uh, this, this uh, challenge that would hopefully uh, or already has um, uh, invited people to be more interested in, in being active on LinkedIn and uh, share their stories and share their experience. So I'm not sure if you're aware, but LinkedIn has this tool called the Social Selling Index. It is for free. There's a spe special link to access that. I believe, Maria, you can you can probably share yeah. that, right? Share the link. And yeah. yep. So once you're logged in, uh, you click on that link, you get your score. So my score is embarrassing. It's 53. Only should be higher, but you know the. It's always the person who who teaches others doesn't like their they don't, their score sucks. So <laughs> anyway, point being, um, it, it'll, it shows you the score from zero to 100 and measures how effectively you're, um, you're doing things, you're active on, on LinkedIn. And there are different, um, different elements that make up the score. And LinkedIn has divided that into four different components. Um, so there's like, how well have you established your professional brand? What type of content you're sharing? Are people engaging with your content? Are you connecting with the right people, et cetera? So there are four different elements. What we created was a little challenge around that so that each week you would have four different tasks to finish and uh, each task corresponds to one of those comp components. And so once you finish this one task, hopefully this component will have a higher uh, value. And once you uh, finish a task, you get one point. So each week we would record um, the the SSI score, and then you can also count how many points you um, got this week by doing certain tasks. Uh, they're not not mandatory, but it's you know it, it's great to get some points. And at the end of the the quarter, the one who has the most points will get a prize. So there's this kind of a competition element there as well, and it has proven to be uh, very. Uh, effective so for example people who have 30 their score on 35 they managed to get it to 56 in three weeks and even if you have a pretty high score 68 so it's once you have over 60 it's it's a very good score it's very hard to get to 100 i don't know anyone who has 
like even 90. Um, so even if you have a high score, you are able to get it even higher. So please, uh, next slide. And um, just the score maybe doesn't tell you much, uh, which is why we created in this Google sheet where you can uh, write down your name and then record uh, your weekly score. Uh, we also added two different tabs there. Uh, one is called, why should I do this? So there I just wrote down all of the reasons why it's good to have a higher LinkedIn uh, social selling score. So if you have it over 50, like your posts will be pushed, the algorithm will push your posts like 5% more than normal. If you have it over 60, then 10% more, uh, et cetera. And also how it increases your visibility. Um, and then the second tab was, uh, how should I do this? So that was where I explained um, the, the, the concepts of all of those different components and what they mean and what you can do in order to improve them. So that's, again, just two separate tabs that um, just explain the reason why we're doing this and why it is a good is it good for you as well so because it it is it is good for every person who does that it's not only like test leo's own agenda or, or like hiring or employer brand agenda and uh yeah on the right you can see some of the examples so we would ask people to write recommendations or uh, post a picture of them working uh, remotely and adding their ideas so we encourage people to tell their stories uh what uh, what else we did was that we uh, have um, designed custom visuals as well. So we have custom headers uh, for each uh, you can that you can add for to your uh, profile, and we also have those um, milestone visuals that you can see that, that says roar in the middle there. So we encourage people whenever they have a milestone, like they get promoted, like Javier there. Um, or start a Tessio, uh, we encourage them to use those visuals and then uh, make a post about that. So uh, we try to create as many supporting materials as possible as well. And um, yeah, it's 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 really it's really fun and it's so cool to see the numbers grow and this actually working. And then as we have a separate Slack channel for that as well, anybody's um, uh, anybody's invited to join. Uh, we share different tips and tricks as well and different uh, experiences. And also it's a very like easy place where you can just drop in the link of your recent post and ask people to engage with it. So that's, yeah. How many uh, employees are participating in this uh, score game right now? Uh, just a second, I'll check how many we have in the in the channel. Um, I think over. Uh, well, we've got uh, forty-seven. Yeah, that's we have over two hundred people, so it is not massive, but still, and those people who are doing it are doing it very well. So yeah. yeah. But still, 47 is a really good result. Uh, um, yeah. So I think, uh, again, a really good idea to copy with pride. <laughs> and I see already in chat that uh, some of the participants probably will, will start using this game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you can change the slide. So, sorry. Um, it's it's really cool to see uh, the the feedback from uh, from our followers as well. So uh, when you apply for Tessio in the application, we ask uh, people in addition uh, to other things to a uh, question. So where did they hear about us first, and uh, why, in their opinion, Tessio stands out from other employers? And uh, people mentioned that our people are very verbal on LinkedIn about what it's like to work at Tessio. And they see the positive feedback and they, they see the pictures, they see the posts, and uh, it does, does make an impact and, and people bring that out in the applications. Also, um, I added a little um, stat here on the right. So last year we had a over 300% growth in job views compared to the previous year. So this is not obviously only employer brand um, influence there because we started hiring much more last year as well and took more of a, um, a strategic approach to 
to tar add targeting in on LinkedIn. But at the end of the year, you can see this climb there. That was when we started uh, with the uh, content collaboration initiative as well. So I believe that was like October or so um, where we started to yeah creating much more content and um, the views grew there as well. So it the the impact is seen in numbers and both in the the con uh, comments and, and feedback uh, by our candidates and next slide please and um our uh our founder, Cristel, is leading by example. So the way we get to do it very well with our, our test lions is that we have an awesome founder who is super enthusiastic um, about uh, being active on social media and spreading more word about you know, female founders, test software testing in general. And um, yeah, just very freely shares a lot of different content that's sometimes funny, sometimes inspirational, sometimes educational. And uh, I encourage you to uh, follow her on Instagram and also on TikTok. She makes funny, funny TikToks. And um, also on LinkedIn, one thing that we... Um, we discovered she's also very exper experimental. So as we are encouraging everyone to be more experimental, um, you would usually, you know, you create a, a, a TikTok and then you post it on TikTok or maybe you post it on Instagram as well, because this is kind of a place where you have these entertaining videos. What Crystal did was that she posted her, started posting her funny TikToks on LinkedIn as well. The Otherwise, you would you would think that LinkedIn is a quite a, a professional uh, platform where we talk about our our work and our job and 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 one, what we've achieved and it's kind of serious. Um, but turns out, you know, we're all people and it doesn't really matter which platform it is. We still like entertain entertaining content, um, and the posts uh, with her TikToks on LinkedIn are some of the most popular posts she's ever done. So when um, if maybe. I just asked her the average um, impression on a post would be around like 7,000 to, I don't know, 15,000. Then with TikToks, she has her most popular one was like around 300,000 impressions. So that's the, the amount of times that a person sees the post. It can be the same person, but it's just like how many times the post um, is shown to a person. Um, and yeah, so it's, those videos have proved to be very uh, successful. Uh, so I encourage everyone to just experiment and um, with different different types of content on different platforms and see how it works because sometimes it does wonders. But what would be your recommendations? Uh, I mean, uh, often company founders or CEOs or managers are not so into social media and posting their photos or videos. Um, what to do then? I feel like, especially for the executives, it's very, for them, they're very number oriented people, the data oriented people. It's important to show them the, the impact and kind of show the importance. So even if they don't, on, don't maybe they're not convinced initially when you show them some other case studies or, or some stats just start on your own like make your own proofs of concepts like start doing it on with with one hiring manager and ask them to be more active on linkedin and then see how many more applicants they get to a position compared to someone who's who barely has a profile and then you have already um data that's based on on your company so maybe start start uh, from small and then you have more information to back up the reason why it's important. And uh, if the executives are, you know, if the, the hiring and, and all these uh, goals are important to them at the end, they will see the connection there and um, hopefully will be more, um, yeah, more willing to do that. And also just address the fears, like what is, what what what's what is your insecurity how can we help maybe there's an alternative maybe you don't have to do a video or what we did was also we created a, a recruitment video recently where we said that you don't have to speak in a video we'll do a voiceover later so it's going to be a video you don't don't have to talk there maybe they're afraid of talking so there's always a a, a way if if we address the specific uh fear and then maybe either exclude that or uh, help the person to overcome it so you just have to be creative. 
Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So yeah, that's it from me. Um, hopefully that was um, helpful. Do you have any questions? Uh, I noticed one uh, question regarding uh, uh, Glassdoor. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a question like, uh, do you have any feedback from candidates about how often they check, check you out on Glassdoor before applying? Uh, yeah, so again, uh, we asked those uh, questions in the, the job uh, application and people often mentioned there as well that you have a very good review on Glassdoor. So I feel like it should be cool to, to work there. It should be great uh, experience to, to work at Tesleo. So um, that is, yeah, that's mentioned a lot by candidates. Um, we can't see, we don't have the, the paid version of Glassdoor, so we can't see all the stats, because otherwise I guess you can see how many um, views you have on certain um, uh, reviews, et cetera. Uh, but yes, it's especially globally and in the US, uh, Glassdoor is a big deal. In Estonia, not so much. Um, but yep, this is, that's why we have a, like, a, a huge focus on that too. Okay. And then another question, uh, what employer branding initiatives have you done in different locations or different markets? Uh, are there any like specific projects you have done, I don't know, speci specifically on the USA market or in Spain or somewhere um, else? To be honest, we haven't yet but we're working on something. And uh, uh, right now, because once I started, we barely had an active employer brand communication at all. So the first step was kind of to establish it on a, on a global, more general level so that people have at least heard of us as an employer, have some sort of an idea who we are. Uh, but now, uh, yes, yeah, since we have a certain markets that we're focusing on, uh, we're working on more specific, um, more specific um, campaigns as such. But so far, unfortunately, uh, don't have a, a specific example share. And uh, another question, uh, which is the most important social media channel in terms of employer branding? Well, that depends on your target group, I believe. Um, if it's, yeah, it's important to just focus on the people you would like to hire and then do your research. What's the most popular platform um, in the Latin American uh, region, for example, because it is different to to Europe, uh, and then if once you uh, you found the most popular ones, then see the demographics, uh, which generations are using which apps the most. Because our I, estimations based on our gut feeling are wrong. If we think that you know TikTok is more Gen Z, yes, it is, but also there are people, a lot of people there who are over thirty. So you know you can maybe. Uh, you know, do better targeting based on that. So a, a lot of research and it really depends on your uh, target group. Yeah, we had something really similar at World Remit, you know, kind of LinkedIn was great for all our um, UK and US uh, sort of mm -hmm. corporate or head office kind of recruitment. But half our workforce works in our um, customer contact centers in the Philippines, you know, and actually mm -hmm. the greatest um driver of kind of recruitment there was actually through our facebook groups yeah and referrals as well so it's just about mm -hmm. and just i think to your point it's understanding who you're trying to reach and use the right channel mm -hmm. to to get them and yeah don't work on assumptions actually look at the data what's it telling you because you might be surprised mm -hmm. exactly all right, but uh, our time's up today. So uh, thank you, Charlotte, and thank you, Karina, for uh, joining us today. Uh, what's the channel for like connecting with you? Uh, do you also use LinkedIn or? Yes. Yes, very active <laughs> on LinkedIn. I've just looked at my own SSI score actually, and I'm nearly at sixty. So. Let's try and get that oh. up <laughs> so let's uh, all improve the uh, SSI score and uh, add each other uh, as new contacts on LinkedIn. Uh, but thank you again for sharing your uh, insights and uh, know-how. And um, thank you uh, to all of the participants today. I hope you got 
uh, new ideas, new energy to boost your employer brand. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, if you are looking for a new uh, ATS or recruitment software uh, to showcase your employer brand and culture, and if you want to improve the candidate experience you're offering, uh, feel free to contact us. We're more than happy to help you uh, with that. And also there will be uh, another webinar already at the end of March. So uh, keep an eye on our social media channels as well. Uh, we will let you know, uh, know um, about the next uh, guest speakers uh, as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, enjoy your day. And um, I don't know. What to, what, to, what to say? Enjoy your day and I hope that you will get the best, best candidates from all the markets you're hiring at the moment. Although the market is, uh, the situation on the market is difficult, uh, I still hope that you will, you will succeed. So thank you. Thanks, thank everyone. you. Bye. Just bye.